Number 6. UFO Crash Site, Salta, Argentina On August 17, 1995, a UFO crashed in a remote area of Salta, Argentina. Locals who saw the crash claimed that they saw a bright light in the sky, followed by a loud explosion. They also reported seeing strange, otherworldly debris scattered around the crash site. One of them was Tony Galzano, who noted that, around lunchtime, a bright metallic object that looked like a saucer went streaming through the sky, followed by two smaller objects. A powerful explosion sounded as the objects collided, sending seismic shocks through the area that could be felt many miles away. There were thick black plumes of smoke billowing into the air where the mysterious craft landed. Galzano, a pilot, decided to head up in the air to see what was going on. But on his first sight soon after the crash, he found nothing at all. But just two days later, he flew across a huge area with all the hallmarks that something had crashed there. The surrounding trees raised even more suspicion since they had parted and seemed to be covered in some sort of acidic liquid. Galzano couldn't look for too long though, since his plane began to mysteriously fail. Knowing he wouldn't be able to make it back to the airstrip, he prepared for an emergency landing. Thankfully, he came out unharmed. Once on the ground, Galzano noticed that the dirt seemed off. He decided to take a handful of the dust that littered the ground, and it was eventually brought to the University of La Plata to be analyzed. Scientists at the university confirmed that the mysterious dust was made up of 98% pure potassium, but the remaining 2% were a total enigma. They couldn't figure out what it was made of at all, perhaps suggesting that it was not from this planet. Two weeks after the crash, a fleet of 4x4s flocked to the site. From them, countless army officers poured out, all dressed in black uniforms. The people at the site who had been forming an impromptu search party were then told in no uncertain terms to go home and that the situation was now under control thanks to the Argentine military. Although locals were rushed away and the area was cordoned off, rumors started to spread that the military had discovered a crashed UFO and was conducting secret tests. Some people had even claimed to have seen strange creatures around the area in the days after the crash. But, as with most UFO sightings, there's no concrete evidence to support these claims. Just a few weeks earlier, an airplane had to take evasive action to avoid colliding with an unknown flying object while approaching the nearby Bariloche Airport. Some people have speculated that this incident may be connected to the UFO crash, suggesting that the military was already tracking the object and may have shot it down. Still, there is no evidence to support this theory. Of course, the military denied the existence of UFOs, stating that the debris was simply from a weather balloon that crashed. But many people have remained skeptical, and the incident has continued to be a topic of discussion and speculation among the UFO and alien enthusiasts. Number 5. Krafla Toilet, Iceland Have you ever had to use the bathroom in the middle of nowhere? Well, in Iceland, they've got you covered. One of the most spectacular restrooms is found near the geothermal Krafla station. An experiment was carried out there from 2009 to 2011 in an attempt to get heat directly from interacting with the subterranean magma which powers the whole station. But it's not just the geothermal station that benefits from the magma's heat. There's also a shower on the side of the road heading up to Kraflu in the middle of a big barren landscape. The shower doesn't have any walls or way to cover up for modesty, so using it is not for the faint of heart. But since there is no civilization for miles around, except for the few workers at the station, many people have been able to take a shower in relaxed comfort without any prying eyes. This let them take in the beautiful scenery with the shower of a lifetime. It constantly has a supply of hot water since it is linked to a geothermal spring underground. This means it can keep going all year long, rain or shine. There was once also a toilet at the site, not a functional one but an art piece designed as an additional tourist attraction. This has been since replaced by a sink which again is purely for decorative purposes. So if you ever feel like you need to freshen up in the middle of nowhere in Iceland, you know exactly where to go. 
Would you have the guts to take a shower at Craftlu? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe while you're at it. Number 4. Rakotsbruck, Germany The Devil's Bridge, Rakotsbruck in Krummelauer, East Germany, looks like something straight out of Tolkien's Middle Earth. This stunning stone bridge stretches across a river, reflecting in the clear water below, making a perfect, full circle. This symmetry between the bridge and its reflection is how it gets its nickname as the Devil's Bridge. It's commonly believed that something so perfect could only have been built with the help of the Devil in exchange for the first soul to cross the bridge. In reality, it was built by humans and was commissioned by a local knight back in 1860. Instead of being a simple stone make, the bridge is actually pretty flashy. It has rock spires at either end of it which are designed to resemble basalt columns, and through the arch of the bridge you can see another pillar of basalt poking up from the water like the spires of some fantasy city. The bridge is currently off-limits for anyone who wishes to cross it to protect and preserve this amazing monument in the middle of the woods, but many people still turn up when the light is just right to get a photograph of this amazing structure and its gorgeous reflection. Number 3. McDermott's Castle, Ireland In the middle of a lake in Ireland, a ruined castle sits on a small island, like something right out of a fairy tale. McDermott's Castle is a historic site located on an island in Loaf Key, County Roscommon. It was built in the 12th century by the McDermott clan, which was one of the most powerful families in the region during that time. The castle was originally made up of a circular stone tower with walls that were 9 feet thick. Over the years, it was expanded and modified with the addition of a second tower and a defensive wall. The site played an important role in the history of the region, since it was the seat of the McDermott clan who were involved in countless battles throughout the centuries. But by the 17th century, the castle had fallen into disrepair and was completely abandoned. There is also a legend for McDermott's castle. It is said that Una, the beautiful daughter of the chief of the McDermott clan, fell in love with a boy who was not a good enough match for her. Her father forbade them from seeing each other, exiling Una to a castle island so the two lovers wouldn't be able to meet. But the water didn't deter Una's lover from reaching her, and he would often swim out across the lake to be with his beloved. Sadly, on one of his trips, Una's lover drowned. Heartbroken, Una herself died from grief. The pair are said to be buried under the two intertwining trees on the island. The love story and the uniqueness of a castle propped up on a small island brings many people to see McDermott, with some tours being available for those who wish to explore the island for themselves. Number 2. The Last House on Holland Island, USA Holland Island was a small but thriving community found in Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, with a population of 360 people at its peak in the early 20th century. The island was home to several farms, a school, a church, a post office, and a simple general store. They even had their own baseball team. The islanders were mostly just farmers and fishermen who made their living from the surrounding waters and the fertile soil of the island. The island's architecture was typical for the Chesapeake Bay region, with many of the homes being built in a Victorian style. The Holland Island House, the last remaining home on the island, was the biggest one of the grandest buildings on the landmass and stood as a symbol of the island's prosperity and cultural heritage. They were also known for their wildlife, including a variety of birds and fish that were abundant in the surrounding waters. Visitors to the island could enjoy fishing, crabbing, and hunting, and Holland was a popular destination for vacationers looking to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. But instead of rock, Holland Island, like many others in the Chesapeake Bay, was composed of mud and silt. Over time, this started to wear away, helped in part by rising sea levels. Around 1914, Holland Island's coastline eroded considerably, Residents frantically attempted to save their island by importing stones to erect walls and, in some cases, sinking boats to delay erosion, but all efforts failed. Most citizens of Holland would be forced to destroy their homes and migrate to the mainland. Some stayed despite the risk, 
But when the chapel was destroyed by the rain and high winds during a tropical storm back in 1918, it was the tipping point for the last household to leave. A few stragglers lingered behind to harvest what they could from the remaining fishing season, but this came to a halt when the chapel finally closed its doors for good in 1922. Over the next few decades, more and more of the island wasted away until the only thing left was the Holland Island House. Built in 1888, the grand home didn't even have any land around it thanks to erosion, just looking like a floating home in the middle of the bay. The house survived several storms and hurricanes, but it was inevitable that it would someday slip beneath the waves. In an effort to save the island he grew up on, Stephen White, a minister and former waterman on Holland Island, purchased it for $70,000 in 1995. He spent over $150,000 over the next 15 years trying to save what was left, including bringing in rocks, sinking a barge, and trying to create levees and dams. But all of his effort was for nothing. Holland Island shrank even during the time White owned it, demonstrating that Mother Nature was an unstoppable force. In 2010, after becoming sick, White sold Holland Island, knowing he had little time left. He died that same year. A photographer named Dave Harp captured a series of photos of the Holland Island house on behalf of the new owners, the Concord Foundation. The photos quickly went viral and brought attention to the island's plight. Despite efforts to save the house, it eventually collapsed into the bay in 2012. Number 1. The Rich Hat Structure, Mauritania The Rich Hat Structure, which is also known as the Eye of the Sahara, or the Gulb er Rich Hat, is a geological formation found in West Africa's Mauritania Sahara Desert. It is a circular feature of stone with concentric rings that span approximately 28 miles in diameter. The fact that it's so large means that it can actually be seen from outer space. The site's visibility from the far reaches of our atmosphere made it a perfect landmark for early astronauts. Those on board the Gemini missions even used it as a way to help correct and calculate their launch trajectory while heading out on missions. The structure is now so far removed from civilization that it took until those Gemini missions in 1965 for us to even know it existed. Since the early photographs from the Gemini spacecraft, the Eye of the Sahara became a source of fascination for scientists and geologists around the world. The formation is characterized by rings of rock layers that have been uplifted and eroded over millions of years. The central area is made up of sedimentary rocks that are thought to be over 100 million years old, while the outer ring consists of younger rocks that were laid down during the late Cretaceous period. The older sedimentary rocks were put down over millions of years, and some of these rocks hold fossils of marine animals like ammonites and sea urchins. This suggests that the area was once covered by a shallow sea, which gradually shrank over time. The sedimentary rocks also show evidence of being deformed and uplifted, which may have been caused by tectonic plate activity or the movement of magma underneath the Earth's surface. The fact that the area was once underwater has led some people to theorize that the Rishat structure may be somehow related to the lost city of Atlantis. This theory is based on the idea that Plato's description of Atlantis matched some of the characteristics of the unique structure with its circular shape and concentric rings. Although this is likely untrue, scientists are still not 100% sure how the Rishat structure even formed. Some researchers initially believed it to be an impact crater caused by a meteorite strike, but further study has shown that it is more likely a natural geological formation that happened millions of years ago when the megacontinent of Pangaea started splitting apart. Despite this, the structure remains a fascinating feature of the desert landscape, attracting visitors and researchers from all around the world. Thanks for watching. Which one of these strange finds in the middle of nowhere would you explore? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.